Beauty. Beauty. Look at me right here. We're looking like a million dollars. December 22nd, Real Same Sports deal. returns with its you annual year-end edition. Join Bryant Gumbel and all the correspondents okay, as they discuss their most interesting and revealing stories from 2009. January 26th sees the return of 24-7, but this time instead of boxing, it's NASCAR. We'll focus on four-time Sprint Cup champion Jimmy Johnson and his teammates as they prepare for the season opening Daytona 500. Stop busting on that cut. Bust on that cut with the right hand. Okay, right hand's that post. There's Olivia Diaz, Juan's mom. Born in Guetta, Mexico. He and she and Fidencio came to the United States, brought the kids along. Juan and his brother Jose of dual citizenship says, my family keeps me grounded. Made sure he got his college education. Graduated from the University of Houston downtown in May of this year, a political science degree. Would like to become a lawyer. Somewhere down the road, been studying for his LSATs. Great kick. And this is what Diaz needs to do. He needs to try and get Malinaji up against the ropes and work his body, trying, trying to slow him down a little bit more. See Malinaji feels strong. Now he's on his toes a bit, but a lot of this fight, he has not been on his toes. And when he's not on his toes, he gives Diaz these kind of opportunities. Diaz is carrying the round. The right hand inside. Malinaji says, I'll trade with you. Yeah, you know, Malinaji doesn't need to trade with him at this point. You know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. What he's been doing so far is been winning him the, the fight. Now he's making it a bit more even, especially making himself, putting himself in danger's way, especially with a big puncher like Diaz. They exchange a wry smile. El Torito, baby bull, Juan Diaz able to play the role of the bull, and Malinaji not playing Matador in that last sequence. Or at least a busy puncher like Diaz Lennox, um, if not a big one. You, you could see part of, you know, Malinaji feels so comfortable and feels he can mix it up with Diaz that he's doing it. It seems to me almost as a sign that, look, I really feel in control of this fight. But that feeling can betray him because in fighting that way, he lost control of this round. Oh, when you take into account you know, rounds three and round four, you know, being close rounds that, I mean, could go either way. It might not be the kind of control that he really has. Right. See, this is the way Malinaji needs to be fighting. On the move, throwing punches, staying out of, the, out of range, and connecting with his own punches. Before this round, I think if you were looking for one to give to Diaz, it would be the third. Um... Diaz landed a lot of good shots in the first half of this round. And then in the fourth, for the first time in the fight, Diaz actually outlanded Malinaji, and he's got a sizable lead here in round five, just in the power connects. Yep. And it didn't seem that way to me in the fourth round, but certainly it's, it's pretty obvious here. Malinaji has yielded some turf, and Diaz has been able to take advantage of it. Diaz showing a little movement to punctuate the end of the fifth. Okay, now listen, that was a better round, okay? And you know why? Because you got close by the water. Okay, because you got a little closer. Give me some more water. Look, you got a little closer that time, but look, I want you to hold around, keep this sucker pinned to the corner, okay? Look, he has to fight back when you... You already took his heart away from him, okay? So there's nothing left. Look at me here, okay? Give the, use your jabs over time right now. Hand speed and footwork. I'm not seeing no footwork. This is Diaz. Really throwing some good combinations in there. This is what Malinaji needs not to be doing, standing in that type of close quarters to allow Diaz to throw his repertoire of punches. Any one punch can get through. Any one of those punches could be a, a punch that could cause a cut. 
Diaz landed 50% of his punches in that round. 24 of 48, 21 of 39 in the power connects. You heard Malinaji's corner saying, I don't see no footwork. I don't see it either from Malinaji. Those are kind of some of those rounds, though, where he gets out of his profile and he can lose control of the fight. Yeah. And fans of both fighters, when they see the slow motion replays, can say, well, those punches by Malinaji or Diaz, they weren't that devastating. I don't know what, you know, you could say it about both guys. The question is, who's landing the punches? In the last round, Malinaji did a poor job with his jab, only 2 of 34. Good body shot by Diaz, and he steps in with the right. When Malinaji lands on Diaz, it seems to be over a period of 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Paulie lands a shot, two shots, two shots, one shot. Then Diaz will have extended flurries where he seems to land five, six, eight punches, solid shots to Malinaji's head. And that's only when Malinaji is standing still. Sometimes Malinaji's focus could be off, you know, and he sits there and plays. And while he's playing, he gets hit by a couple shots. One minute to go on him. Another round that has its ebbs and flows for each guy. Right hand. Oh, well, Diaz is hurt. That shook right hand Diaz. shook Diaz. In a round, Diaz was winning. Malinaji's got him hurt. Uh, he's fooling around too much. Yep. Go to the body is what you should be doing, not messing around. Diaz is now losing a round he was winning, I think, based on the fact that he was hurt, but Malinaji so unused to hurting his opponent. Bob, as you mentioned, he didn't follow it up. Well, Malinaji needs to be overworking that job right now, keeping Diaz's mind busy on that job so he can throw other combinations in there. Because when a guy's a little bit fuzzy, he has a little focus problem. One of the reasons why he only has five knockouts, he doesn't know how to finish or at least compound the opponent's problem. Don't know the point of any of that. Go. Yo, okay, but okay. What a water. I want you to listen to me this round. Look. I want you to take a round off and just box for me this round. Okay. I, all I want you to concentrate on is moving your head. Uh -huh. Moving your head and using your jab. I don't need a fast round this round, okay? Take the round off, okay? okay? I want you to take this round off. Listen to me, okay? Uh -huh. Take this round off and then look. After this round, we're going for a soul pushing. And Malinaji throws a good uppercut right on the Diaz's jab, causes him to flutter a bit with his feet. Lennox, can you explain after he lands this shot right to the chin and he sees his man hurt, he threw a little flurry, but then he mugged for 25 seconds at the end of the round and did absolutely nothing. He was, a, he was really just showboating a little bit, showing Diaz like, oh, I caught you with that one. Now let me ask you this. You heard, uh, we'll bring in Howard Letterman for his unofficial score first. Okay, Bob, 59, 55. Five rounds to one, Paulie Malinacci. I tell you something, I think it was a shame what he did in round six. I mean, he had one Diaz hurt. He should have jumped on him and not clown. But Paulie Malinacci, his natural ability is to clown, and that's all he's doing. As far as Ronnie Shields goes, I don't know what he's thinking about. His guy's losing a fight, he's telling him to take a round off. That's absolute nonsense. I, I mean, that's terrible advice from the corner. There's no excuse for it. Absolutely none. Juan Diaz has got to press. He's got to get inside. He's got to score. Five to one, Malinaji. Well, Harold, while I, 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 we, you and I have the same score at the moment, but there may be some wisdom in it in the sense that Diaz was hurt with an uppercut, 
coming in last round, and maybe Shields just wants a round for him to get that out of his system, although the re replay showed that he wasn't hurt as badly as maybe we thought at first. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman, ringside in 